So in this video, we'll go over one of the simplest yet very powerful classification technique called k-nearest neighbors. Let me give you a geometric intuition to what is happening so that it's much more easy for you to grasp, right? Imagine, so we'll, we'll take a simple 2D data set, 2D toy data set to understand how k-nearest neighbor works and then we'll go and see more mathematically how things work out, right? So let's assume I have two types of points. So let's, let's take a simple case of a binary classification, right? The simplest case so that we understand how it works. So let's take a case of binary classification. Imagine I have two types of points. I have blue crosses representing one class, right? And I have red crosses representing another class. Okay, let's assume these are two classes of points. Okay, let's assume these are two classes of points. Okay, this is how my points are distributed. Let, this is a 2D space, right? This is my x-axis and this is my y-axis. So let's assume my points are distributed like this. Um, let me draw some more points here, just so that so that we understand what's happening. Okay, now comes the fun part. Let's assume each point here represents a data point. Each cross here, each cross here, the blue cross represents a positive data point, a positive data point, right, or a positive class data point, okay, and a red cross represents a negative class data point, a negative class data point. I'm just, see, anything that we can understand in 2D, then we can scale it to higher dimensions, right, using linear algebra, right. First, let's try to understand this very, very intuitively, just the geometry part of it. Now comes the fun part. Let's assume this whole data that we have here, this whole set of points that we have here, let's assume this is my capital D, right? What is my capital D here? My capital D is a data set of pairs xi comma yi, where my xi belongs to R2, because this is two dimensional data, right? And my yi belongs to two classes, zero and one. So zero being my negative class and one being my positive class. My negative class is red points, my positive class is blue point. And let's assume this is how my data set is, right? Now, now comes the fun part. You're given a trait, you're given a data set. Now, what is the whole purpose of machine learning? You're given a data set, you learn something from it, right? We understood how machine learning work, how classification works, right? You're given a data set, your algorithm, your machine learning algorithm, learn something from this, learns a model, learns a function, as I told you, right? And now given a new query point, given a new query point to the same function, it now says whether it is positive or negative, right? So let's give it a query point. So let's take a query point here. So let's assume I have a query point here. Let's assume this is my query point. Let's call this XQ. Let's call this query point XQ. My, let's assume this is my first query point. Now given a query point now, which I'm coloring it in a different color. This is yellow here, right? And I'm putting it in a circle. Now I want to determine whether this point is blue or red or blue or orange, right? So first thing you'll say, let's think of it uh, intuitively. Now one thing you'll quickly notice is if you look at all the points which are close to this point, if you look at all the points which are close to this point, take all the points which are close to this point. So take points that are close to your query point XQ. Now, what does query point mean? I want to determine what is the class of my query point. So what is what is classification all about? It's about given a query point, you want to determine what is the YQ. This is, this is the whole purpose of classification, right? Or even regression for that matter. Most machine learning is all about this. Given a query point, you want to find what is its class. Now, how do I do it? One way for me to do it is I look at all the points which are close to, which are geometrically close, which are geometrically close to XQ. Now what happens? Most of the points that are in its neighborhood, so this can be called as the neighborhood. This can be called as the neighborhood of my point XQ. In the neighborhood, which means the geometrical proximity or geometrical closeness, you will find mostly blue points. Because, because, because my XQ lies in the neighborhood of my blue points, I could, I could conclude, I could conclude or decide, or I could decide that my XQ is also a blue point 
What does blue mean? Positive label. By just using the proximity, by just using closeness, right? So intuitively that makes sense, right? Intuitively that makes a lot of common sense. Now, that's what literally k nearest neighbor is all about. Let's, let's understand. So I hope you understand the geometric intuition. Now, let me go through and walk you through the steps of it, right? So again, let me just draw the blue points and green points here, a blue points and red points. Let's assume these are all my blue points here. Right? I'm just drawing an example, right? Let's assume all of these are my blue points. All of these are my orange points here. Lot of orange points here, right? Lot of orange points here. And similarly, I have some orange points here. And I have some blue points here. Okay. And let's assume my query point now is here. This is my query point. This is my query point XQ. Now I want to determine, or oh, let, let me just make the make the story more fun. Okay, I have a red, I have I have a red point surrounded by blue points, or orange point surrounded by blue points, and let's assume I have a blue point here surrounded by orange points. Let, let, let's just say, okay. Now given XQ, what is our whole task? Given XQ, find YQ. So given XQ, find YQ. That's what my classification is. And my YQ is basically 0 or 1. 0 means it's negative class. 1 means it's positive class. So what does what does nearest neighbor, K nearest neighbor do? First step, it says find K nearest points. Find K nearest points to XQ in my data set D. This whole data set that I have here is D, right? Find the k nearest points. So what does nearest mean? Nearest means, of course, nearest could mean multiple nearest, right? So right now, for simplicity, let's assume I take the distance. Okay, I'm picking the k nearest neighbor. Let's assume k equals to 3. Let. We'll see how to pick the right k little later. But let's assume k is 3. Then what happens? This is my nearest point, first nearest point. This is my second nearest point, And this is my third nearest point. I've taken these three points. So I've taken this point, this point, and this point as my three nearest neighbors. Okay. Second, it says of the three nearest neighbor, let's assume the three nearest points are x1, x2, and x3. Okay. Let's assume these are my three nearest neighbors to x cube. Right. Now, what it says is because my set of nearest neighbors is x1, x2, x3, for each of these x1, I have a corresponding y1. Because I'm given this data, right? When I'm given data in D, I'm given pairs of Xi comma Yi, right? For each of these points, I know whether it's blue or orange, right? So what it says is next, it says, you take all the class labels of these three points, Y1, Y2, Y3. Now, if, now, now let's see. Now it does something called as a majority vote. What does majority vote mean? It means, so if let's say, how does majority work work? Okay, so we have y1, y2, y3, right? So what does majority vote mean? Let's understand this. Majority vote is a very simple idea. It says, if my y, y1 is positive, y2 is positive and y3 is positive. What is the majority value here? Positive. So then I declare that because in the neighborhood of this point, the three nearest neighbors to my query point are all positive are all positive or blue points, I declare that my YQ is also positive or blue, right? Imagine if this was plus, this was plus and this was minus. What is the majority, majority of these points? There are three points here, right? Two of these points are saying it's positive. One of them is saying it's negative. But what is the majority? Two, two positives, right? So we'll still declare it as positive and we will say YQ equals to positive or blue. Okay. This is called a majority vote and which means your k should preferably be an odd number so that you don't have ties. If k was 4, right? If k was 4, if my k nearest neighbor instead of k equals to 3, if my k was 4, what happens? If, if k was 4, if k equals to 4, right? I can have two positive numbers and two negative numbers. Then what do I do? I'm not fully sure. Then do I declare it as positive or do I declare it as a negative class? I still don't know, right? So it's always good to take k as an odd number instead of an even number. So avoid this, avoid this if you can. 
okay that's all is the idea of k nearest neighbors that's all that's that's the fun here the idea is so simple so elegant right it's 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 mind bogglingly simple right so what we are doing here is given an x cube just to quickly repeat we are taking the k nearest neighbors of x cube okay for this k nearest neighbors let's call them x1 x2 xk we are getting the corresponding y1 y2 so on yk and we are simply doing a majority vote by doing a majority vote i will i can estimate what yq is and that's what is my task it's as simple as that in 2d of course there are there are some there are lot of details here we'll go over it through the rest of the chapter but the core crux the core geometric idea the central concept is as simple as this that's the elegance of machine learning it's extremely simple once you can convert it into geometry it's extremely elegant simple and easy to understand this is not rocket science fortunately